he's been distraught. He said that is, uh, it was a seven member crew. The one member that was rescued, he said, was in critical condition at the hospital, the last he knew. Uh, and he said the families of the other six of his friends, co-workers, and he called them family members at this point, um, their families were just sitting at home, he said, waiting for the call. Um, he, so he is the one who gave us a lot of the details about this crew uh, that was doing uh, road work, uh, pothole work, according to state officials. Um, he said it's a job he's done before for the company. Uh, he believes their shift was 9 p.m. to 5 a.m that they shut down parts of, of the roadway across the key bridge at nine last night so that this work could take place and that this crew of seven was supposed to be, sorry, that's windy back here, was supposed to be on until five o'clock in the morning. He told us at the time of the collapse, they were on a 30 minute break, which is standard. It's how they operate. And that what they do on a break is they take their breaks in their cars, uh, pickup trucks. Actually, he said there were would have been four of them and that his friends and co-workers would have been in their cars. Some eat something, drink a little bit of water or something. Uh, some close their eyes. He said it's very hard, strenuous work. Um, and he said him, uh, Jesus, and his other colleagues who were not working on this shift are just beside themselves. They know how dangerous and precarious it can feel to be that high up on that bridge that he said feels like it's moving up and down all the time. But then he said they just can't imagine what it was like to be on that bridge. Um, so we did speak to him and through an interpreter. He was very gracious. He was very emotional as well. But we want to um, share a little bit with you of what Jesus Campos told us today. I am so, so bad. I feel so bad right now that this has happened. Mr. Campos told us three of the men were from Mexico and were related to each other. He said two were from Guatemala, the rest from Honduras and El Salvador. We asked him, what do you want people to know about your friends and about what happened? No, pues, somos... They were good people. They were good workers, he said. They were working so that they could send money home to their countries. It's too much to bear right now because all the families are waiting at home for the phone calls. And you can't help, or I, I couldn't help but make the connection between the crew members on this road crew who were working on the bridge and, according to the um, Apostleship of the Seas director, the 22 seafarers who were on board the container ship. All of them, according to the people who knew them and talked to them, were doing it for their families so that they could uh, send money back home to have a better life. And um, uh, Director Middleton of the Apostleship of the Sea said for the folks on the container ship, for those seamen, uh, oftentimes that's the only way uh, they sign up for eight, nine month stints away from their families. That's the contract and they do it because that's the way that they earn money for their families so their families can have a better life. It's just very interesting that um, especially this bridge that's uh, and this place that's about the port and working people uh, is also the people that were involved, directly involved and impacted by this are people who are just working. They're just working their jobs. Um, so Mr. Campo said he's hoping and praying for the families and for his friends who remain unaccounted for. I will say, um, we have noticed a lot of equipment coming in and out. It could be a shift change, which happens. Um, it's five after five o'clock, but we have seen a couple of uh, ambulances go in down to Hawkins Point in the last hour. Um, who knows if they just needed some people on standby, um, but that is something that we have seen. We'll be able to take a few questions, uh, but we do need to keep it brief because we want to get these folks back to work. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry. Hey, good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to say thank you to all of the first responders that have come out today to assist in looking for these individuals. We've had tremendous support across the state 
and county and city and federal enterprise. You've seen for yourself the helicopters flying over, the small boats that are out there, the Coast Guard cutter that's out there, the boats that go back and forth bringing people out on scene to search for these individuals. So thank you to those, this entire community for helping in that regard. Second, I want to say thank you to the community for the outpouring of support to those first responders and in particular the outpouring of support and prayers and support for the families of the six individuals. So I would like to announce tonight that based on the length of time that we've gone in this search, the extensive search efforts that we've put into it, the water temperature that at this point we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. And so this evening at about uh, 730, we are going to suspend the active search and rescue efforts. Coast Guard's not going away. None of our partners are going away, but we're just going to transition to a different phase. And so I'm going to turn it over to Colonel Butler, please. Good evening and thank you all for being here to echo the Admiral's comments here. We really appreciate the support from the community to all the first responders here. We appreciate your patience and allowing us to do the best job possible and get the information as it comes up. At this point, as the Admiral said, we're going away from the search and rescue portion to a recovery operation. The changing conditions out there have made it dangerous for the first responders, the divers in the water. We will still have surface ships out overnight at 0600 hours tomorrow. We are hoping to put divers in the water and begin a more detailed search to do our very best to recover those six missing people. Thank you. With that, we have time for just a few questions. We know there's a lot of questions uh, that still have to be answered, and uh, we do have time for just a few. So uh, if we could take a few, please. So do we think it's, it's still just six that there's talk of maybe other cars on the bridge. All, all the information we have is this six individuals. Got it. Yes, sir. Can you go into detail uh, about how difficult this might be for the recovery uh, phase of this now? Like what kind of challenges are you up against? Well, I'll start by saying, I'm gonna turn it over to the experts on diving. I'm not an expert on diving, but we've got very difficult water temperatures. You have structures from the bridge that are in the water that can move with the tides and currents, making that dangerous for divers and people in the water to actually try to do recovery. And we do not want to injure any of these first responders in this recovery effort. We, we absolutely want to be as safe as possible for everyone involved in this. And I'll, have, I'll have, see Colonel Bowen has anything he wants to add. Can you go into specifics about what the search and rescue entailed? Like were there scuba divers or was everything above water, sonar, any sort of equipment that might have been utilized over the past 12 hours? From the outset, we moved all those resources in with dive teams from various state, local, and uh, county agencies. We also use sonar. We're doing our very best in some very difficult times and difficult conditions, which is why we're making that transition now. The last thing we want to do is put divers in the water with changing currents, low temperatures, very poor visibility, visibility, and so much metal and other unknown objects in the water. All it takes is one object to strike an individual and all of a sudden we have a first responder trying to recover another first responder. I think at 0600 we'll find ourselves in a better position to understand the dynamics of what we're dealing with and to address the issue in a much safer manner. Did the authorities have six IDs now and have those victims each been contacted, those families I should say? I can't speak on that. That's still in the investigative portion of this. Can you speak to some of the difficulties in actually retrieving the remains? Have any remains been retrieved so far? We've also heard reports that there might be individuals trapped inside of vehicles, that there might be debris that has made it more challenging for FBI and other law enforcement to deploy. All of that is unknown at this point. And as I said, we have to cease operations. We can't start again until we can assure the safety of those divers and the rescue personnel that are gonna participate in this. If we look at how, how challenging it is at a simple motor vehicle crash to extract an individual, I'm sure we can all imagine how much harder it is to do it in inclement weather, when it's cold, under the water, with very limited to no visibility. So just to clarify,
That is correct. So Colonel, you're confident then that no other vehicles made it onto that bridge before the collapse or as it was collapsing, I should say? Based upon the fact the original information that was provided, the Maryland Transportation Authority Police Department was able to shut down traffic. Is there the possibility that there was another vehicle on there other than those vehicles involved in the construction process? I think we all would have to understand, yes, that's a distinct possibility. As unfortunate as it may be, it's a distinct possibility. However, we don't have any information to support that at this point. Ma'am? bring the divers out, do you have an idea of where these individuals are, if they were in cars or not, and do you know how long the recovery effort is going to take? We do not know at this point. I'm sure as you've seen some of the aerial photos, there is a tremendous amount of debris in the water from containers hanging off ships. We have to make sure those are shored up. We're going to work with structural engineers to help them understand how to navigate and address the challenges of having bridge structure in the water that may be sharp, that could puncture a suit, that could puncture an airline. All of these are things that we must take our time with. Do you know where the victims are located? This last question, by the way. I'm sorry? Do you know where the victims are located in the water? Have you been able to find them yet or if they're in cars or not? At this point, we do not know where they are, but we intend to give it our best effort to help these families find closure. How might inclement weather tomorrow impact the recovery efforts? Very clearly it could, but we're going to do everything in our power to help these families find closure. How stable has the boat been? 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 Folks, we're going, to be, we're going to be establishing Unified Command as well as a Joint Information Center. And I know there's a lot of questions, um, and we're going to be providing that information where we will uh, continue to provide updates. Uh, but that is, that is the extent of our updates tonight. We thank you all for coming. Bad. You know, there's so many words for it. We're outside of an office building here on Broning Highway in the Point Breeze area. Uh, we were told that some family members were gathering here. Um, we saw a few of them come out. Obviously, they looked sad and they looked like they were still just digesting all of this information, especially when you see that video and you just think about the bridge coming down. Uh, but I spoke with a man named Carlos Suazo. He says that he's the brother of a man named Maynor Suazo. He says that his brother sadly is one of the six presumed dead when that bridge came down. He said that they have a humble family that loves to get together and meet all the time in the Owings Mills area. And he says that right now they're just looking for answers. Take a listen to what he had to say to me. The truth is that we feel too hurt as relatives of the victims of the bridge, given that we never expected information at this time of the morning, which happened at around 1.45. We were practically notified at almost two and a half, and I received information at five o'clock. And we decided to come to the intelligence and security agencies of the state of Maryland, in which they have responded to us. They have assisted us, but they leave us very worried. Again, he's just one of many family and friends um, that were out here that we saw coming out of this building here. Um, many of them didn't want to speak. Again, many of them are still just really dying or uh, trying to digest all of this information um, that their loved one is gone. I've been saying it all day. It has left a pit in your stomach and getting this news tonight. It only makes things even worse. If you're just joining us right now, maybe you just got home from work. You haven't seen all the details today. This all happened around 1.30 this morning with that cargo ship quickly approaching the key bridge. It had some power malfunctions, lost power, not one, but at least multiple times. And the governor said that that ship, the pilot on there, was able to get that mayday call out and that allowed them to halt traffic on the bridge and prevent this tragedy from being even worse. Eight construction workers who were filling potholes at 1.30 in the morning on that bridge went into the water. Two of them will recover. One who was in serious condition out of the hospital tonight. Another who refused treatment. And then that new information coming in within the just past the, within the past 10 to 15 minutes from the construction company that these men work for. All six of them who were missing as a search and rescue efforts went for hours today. Now presumed dead. And we're going to get into the crippling effect this will have on the local economy, an effect that will not just last for weeks, but months and months down the line, and what this will do to the supply chain. But for now, I want to send it to my colleague, Jessica Albert. She's live at where a vigil took place tonight in Baltimore County, remembering the people who are now presumed dead, those six workers who they were searching for for hours. Jessica. 
Rick, that vigil here at Mount Olive Baptist Church wrapped up about an hour ago, and there were several faith leaders from several different denominations here tonight. The goal of tonight was really all about these people, this community here coming together and praying for these construction workers who we have now learned have just been presumed dead. They are trying to come together and just really wrap their arms around this community. And really, honestly, Rick, this vigil came together in just a matter of hours, and that really speaks to the Baltimore and Maryland community and its spirit. This community will always look out for one another and do whatever they can to support each other in these tragic times like we're experiencing today. Several elected leaders were at tonight's vigil, including Mayor Brandon Scott and Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski. But there were also others here from far away, including PG County's executive and the comptroller for Maryland, Brooke Learman. They're not only praying for the crew missing in this, uh, in this water, presumed dead, but they're also praying for this community, like I said, that is deeply impacted. This is a tragedy that is unthinkable. But one thing I know about those of us in Baltimore, whether you're in Baltimore City or in Baltimore County, whenever uh, there is a tragedy, we come together. And the community members were also praying for the first responders that have been out there all day long searching these waters, working since the early hours of the morning trying to rescue these men. Um, it, it really just was a touching moment. All of the community members came together. All of the elected leaders came together. This community, like I said, they show up for one another, and we will continue to be out here covering these uh, types of vigils as they do.